welcome back to another Tabletop Review. Today we'll revisit the Kimber MicroCarry 380. It's been a while since I reviewed this Kimber MicroCarry 380. It was one of my very first videos. Back then I was still sorting out the equipment and format for my reviews and I'll admit that when I look back at my early work it wasn't all that good. But you know what? That video is by far the most viewed of the more than 50 reviews I've done since. And that's not all. It also has the most likes as well. This past year, looking at monthly views, that Kimber Micro Carry 380 review topped everything I've produced. Nothing has beat it. That would suggest that people really must like, or at the very least, must be very interested in the Kimber Micro Carry 380. Well, that got me to thinking. I've been carrying the Kimper Micro Carry 380 a lot as my everyday carry this past year, and I've made a major update to it. I added a Crimson Trace grip activated laser system. So perhaps it's time to revisit this little pocket rocket and do an update. Do I still think the Kimper Micro 380 makes a great pocket carry? Let's make sure this gun is cleared first. By the way, If you enjoy this review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, as you know, if I own it, I usually start off with why I bought the gun I'm reviewing. As you can see, this is a small gun, and I'm a pretty good sized guy with large hands and especially long fingers. So, what's the story here? Well, it's simple. I like to pocket carry, and the gun I've pocket carried for a few years is actually even smaller, the C Camp 32. As much as I really like the C-Camp for pocket carry, I just wasn't able to find the ammo for it. The C-Camp is finicky about its ammo, and what it likes wasn't available at any price. So I went on a search for a replacement pocket sized pistol. But why the Kimber Micro Carry 380, you might ask? Well, that had a bit to do with another one of my guns, a Kimber Custom Crimson Carry 2, a 45 1911. That is just plain awesome. I've had this 1911 for more than a decade, and I just can't say enough great things about it. But for me, it's not a practical everyday carry firearm. I need something I could pocket carry if I needed to. So you can probably understand why I was attracted to the Kimber Micro 380. It looks like my 1911's baby brother. Now to be honest, I did take a look at several other micro pistols before I settled on the Kimber 380. Strong contenders included the iconic Colt Mustang, the double single action, action laser equipped Smith and Wesson Bodyguard 380, the Ruger LCP for its laser and slim design, and the Sig P238 for its smooth operation and overall excellent workmanship. In the end, I chose the Kimber Micro 380 for reasons that I'll outline in a moment. But first, let's back up a little and talk about Kimber firearms. Kimber Firearms is located in Yonkers, New York, and since its beginning in 1979 has developed a good reputation for producing high-end firearms. The 1911 Kimber Custom Crimson Carry II is a great example. It was so popular that Kimber produced a scaled-out version of its 1911, the Kimber Micro Carry 380, in 2013. And in response to public demand, produce a 9mm version, the Kimber Micro 9 in 2015. All three of these models remain very popular to this day. And while Kimber continues to offer their Micro Carry 380 in a larger variety of formats, Kimber also now offers a new version called the Kimber Micro CDP Custom Defense Package, which sports an ambidextrous safety and low profile 3 dot tritium night sights. My Kimber Micro Carry 380 came in its original box, came with a lock, came with a good manual, and also came with a carrying case and an extra mag. This one has an extension on it. Now I haven't always been a fan of lasers. It's really only been since I've gotten older that I've learned to appreciate what a good grip activated laser can do to make up for changes in my eyesight and reaction time. But it needs to be an automatic activation. If I have to hit a button to turn it on, it loses value for me. The Crimson Trace grip system on my 1911 has convinced me long ago of the merits. And even though my Kimber Micro 380 didn't come with laser grips, 
Crimson Trace provided that aftermarket upgrade for about $240, and they were fairly easy to install. Just remove the rosewood grips using a T10 driver. Change out the location of the upper screw base on the right side. And install the new Crimson Trace grips using the same screws. The power switch is here, the activation switch is here, small adjustment allen screws are here for elevation and here for windage. Gripping the gun activates the laser. The Kimber Micro Carry is a single action 380 ACP automatic. Like all 1911s after which it's modeled, it's meant to be carried with a round in the chamber the hammer back and the safety on. It has a 2.75 inch barrel. Flush magazine carries six rounds plus one. The extended magazine carries seven rounds plus one. The barrel is stainless steel. The frame is aluminum. The original grips were rosewood. There's nice texturing on the back strap, on the hammer, on the mag release, on the slide release, and even on the trigger. The weight is only 13.4 ounces unloaded. It's smooth all over, no sharp edges. The single action trigger pull is about seven pounds, very crisp. The reset is extremely short, but clear. The steel sights are good size with dovetail mounts, very nice white dots, good target acquisition, and there are many sight upgrade options available out there. In the style of the standard 1911, the Kimber Micro has a similar thumb safety slide release and mag release. However, there's no grip safety. So how about my range experience? Well, this Kimber Micro 380 is a long ways from my full size 1911 Kimber. And it's certainly a very different experience as well. But the quality of design and workmanship is still there. Okay, I'll admit that I like the SIG's night sights and the Kimber is just a wee stiffer to operate than the SIG P238. But on all other measures, they are about equal. And for the Kimber, it's just a tad better. Of course, that's just my opinion. And I really like this gun's feel. It may be a micro, but there's no mistaking its 1911 heritage. If you like the 1911, you'll enjoy the functions and the ergonomics of this gun. And the highly textured crimson trace grips add to the feel. The magazine flies out upon release. And it's a good sturdy six round magazine that loads easily and firmly clicks flush into the magazine well. Racking the slide back if the hammer is down is not as easy as the SIG, but still very smooth. It has a nice fluid feel to it. In true 1911 fashion, this gun is meant to be carried cocked and locked. So the safety is really important here. The safety is large enough and can be moved up easily but firmly with my thumb and it has a light but sure feel when pushed down to disengage. The textured slide release is large enough uh, with a good solid feel and works smoothly. The sights are quite large for such a small gun. Very easy to quickly acquire targets. The trigger is 1911 style. Take up is very short and the pull breaks crisp, crisply at the factory setting of 7 pounds, but feels lighter. Reset is very short, as I already said, uh, with a nice click. Muzzle lift is okay, although I feel the punch when I fire the Kimber Micro 380. It's acceptable for, for a small lightweight 380. Maintaining a 3 inch spread at 25 feet is fairly easy. Drawing from holster and hitting randomly alternating targets widens the spread to about 8 to 10 inches. And this is where the laser provides an edge. For me, it helps improve my timing and accuracy enough to make it worth the extra cost.
So after a year, I'll have to admit that I find it hard to come up with anything really negative about the Kimber Micro 380. Sure, the Ruger LCP is thinner and lighter, and the SIG P238 is easier to rack and has great night sights. And the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard's double single action format has its advantages. But in the end, all of these are differences, not necessarily cons. Of course, carrying only six to eight rounds could be viewed as a con, but that's the compromise you make with these micros. Although not my experience, some have complained about the need for a break-in period with the Kimber Micros. However, I do have one thing that I've heard others complain about. Occasionally, my thumb has gotten in the way of the slide release when I fired this gun, pushing it up and causing the slide to unintentionally lock back, locking the action open. This gun is so small, I've had to train myself to hold it properly uh, so that doesn't happen, and also so that the laser is act activated by my grip as well. I do better when I'm using the extended magazine. By the way, my daughter-in-law is very small. Her concealed carry is the Bel Air model, and she has had no problems at all. But neither has my daughter when she has fired this gun. So be aware, if you're large like me, you may have to train yourself a bit. How about pros? Okay, now that we're listing pros, it's time to answer the question why I chose the Kimber Micro 380 over the other micros. I mentioned a few of these firearms earlier, and I'll tell you that in the end I was a little torn between the Kimber and the SIG P238. I really like the SIG, but here are the reasons I chose the Kimber in the end. It has superb fit, finish, and appearance. Even without the rosewood grips, I love the looks of this gun. Operationally, this is such a functionally smooth little gun. Ergonomically, it feels great in my hand. It's got that 1911 feel, although in micro. The trigger is just plain outstanding. It's smooth and crisp with an outstanding reset. The gun is small and really smooth all over, making it very concealable. The metal sights are really nice and visible and can be changed if I want. It's got minimal muzzle lift. Although small and light, it's relatively comfortable to fire. It has ex excellent accuracy. Significantly, I could get the Crimson Trace laser grips for this gun but only the instinctive activation system was available for the SIG. And probably the most important, compared to the others, I'm actually very good with this little gun. That was what really tipped the scales when compared to the SIG P238. For whatever reason, I've always been better with the Kimber. This assembly is fairly easy. We're going to remove the magazine, check to make sure the gun is unloaded. Then we're going to push the slide release pin out from the other side here. Uh, to do that, we've got to bring this slide back to the half moon in the slide there is above this end of the slide release. Push on the opposite side, and then I just use a little piece of plastic to pry it up. That allows me to remove it. I can then remove the slide from the frame, and I can remove the, the rod and the spring. And then I can remove the barrel. And that's it. Reassembly is basically the opposite. Returning the barrel to the slide and the spring to the rod. There's a half moon in the rod there that has to go down against the cam area of the barrel. Push that down there. And now it's ready to be returned to the uh, frame. You bring the slide back and the extractor here has to be pushed down in order for the slide to come all the way back. With the slide on the frame, I bring that half moon to above that's that, that hole there for the pin to ride in. That should line up the cam. Okay, With it part way down, I can now bring that slide back to the half moon as above that back section of that where that pin is. I should allow it to go back into the frame, and that's it. As for cost, Kimber still makes their standard Kimber Micro Carry 380 with rosewood grips, and even recently I've seen sales for as low as $500. I've also seen the Crimson Trace equipped Micro Carry 380 available for about $650. Now the new Kimber Micro CDP custom defense package will set you back about 800 and if you opt for the laser grips expect to pay closer to a thousand 
So how about used? Well, trust me on this. There are some really great bargains out there on these micro carries. I bought this one used about a year ago for under 350 and it came with its carrying case, all the paperwork, and extra magazine. So if you find a used one out there for about $400 today, I'd say for a Kimber, that would be a heck of a good price. So wrapping up, do I still think the Kimber Micro 380 makes a great pocket carry firearm? I guess I'm a little biased because I've trained with the 1911. So my attraction to the Kimber Micro 380 is influenced by my appreciation and comfort with the Kimber 1911. As I've said before, if you like the 1911, you'll probably love this little gun. It has a natural fit for me. Even with its short sight radius, it's quick to get on target. The Kimber Micro Carry 380 is very light and compact. And let's be honest, that's important when you're looking for a pocket carry. The fact is, the smallest, most discreet gun is the one you're more likely to really carry. The other big deal here is how this gun handles. Compared to what you might expect from a small lightweight firearm, the Kimber Micro Carry is very easy to control. That's due to a combination of the grip angle, the weight, and the trigger design. And again, I can't say enough about this trigger. This gun points instinctively and has a minimal recoil, making follow-up shots quicker. In a world dominated by polymer, it's nice to have the option of a quality-made all-metal gun like this Kimber Micro Carry 380 that really feels great in your hand, that's tight, that functions smoothly, is beautifully finished, is well-constructed and fitted, is extremely accurate, and yet still very attractive. And the addition of these Crimson Trace laser grips makes the shot placement even easier elevating this little gun into the level of very serious defensive firearm. So yes, absolutely. I'd say the Kimber Micro 380 is a great choice for a defensive pocket carry weapon. Any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.